Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I thought I'd do a little bit of a long-term update on my Subaru Crosstrek and specifically talk about how this thing does in the snow. Um, I've owned this thing for about five months. I've got 1,500 miles on it so I haven't driven it all that much uh, but a lot of the time that I have been driving it has been in the snow going up and down this mountain road to go to the ski slope and there's been a lot of snow. We actually had 15 inches on the ground at one point and I was driving around in it. Um, the back alley behind my garage gets really built up with snow, it gets really deep. Right now, uh, in the shots that I'll show, it's not quite as deep, it's rained since, and so a lot of it has melted, but it's still fairly deep back there, deep enough that I can't get my S2000 out. And this thing has honestly just been a champ in it. It's been able to handle pretty much everything I've thrown at it. Um, Definitely in the really deep snow, you know, there's situations where I'm burning the clutch a little bit because I'm slipping it a little too long. Uh, you know, there's not a low gear range in this, obviously, uh, but it's been an awesome vehicle in the snow. And, you know, these Bridgestone Blizzak WS80s, which I put on it uh, for this winter season, they have been great as well. And they seem to have really good grip, uh, you know, in really bad conditions. So they've been nice to have. One of the things I wanted to talk about was how the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle works. And basically, uh, Subaru manual transmission vehicles, um, all their vehicles with manual transmissions tend to have a very similar setup as far as the all-wheel drive system. So you've got your engine torque, uh, that has a 50-50 split through a viscous coupling to the front and rear axles, and then there's an open differential in both the front and the rear. So you've always got a nominal 50-50 split going to the front and the rear, and then if one of those axles starts to spin up because it doesn't have traction, that viscous coupling in the middle, uh, it's a purely mechanical device, will send torque to the other axle which has more grip. Um, so no electronics involved with that viscous coupling, and it can differ that torque ratio, uh, so it won't be 50-50, you know, maybe an 80-20 split or 70-30 split uh, to the axle which has has more grip. Now one of the interesting things uh, that I've noticed while I've been driving it is I've heard the ABS motor kicking on um, while I've been driving in the snow and that's while I've been on the throttle and so I didn't realize I didn't know if Subaru actually did this or not but you know a problem with open differentials is if I have one of the tires in the front spinning and one of the tires in the rear spinning that means I basically have no traction and I'm not going anywhere. Well, Subaru has a clever way of uh, fixing this, which is fairly common in the industry. There's different cars that, that use this trick as well. Um, but what they do is, and they call it LSD, um, very cleverly limited slip device rather than differential. There are not, uh, there is not a limited slip differential in the front or the rear. There is that viscous coupling in the center. Uh, but what this limited slip device does is if one of those wheels starts to spin in either the front or the rear, You'll use your brakes uh, to brake that, uh, slow that wheel down, and then you're going to send more torque to the wheel that actually has traction. And so that's a, a good, clever solution, um, and it's actually been really helpful. I've heard it, um, you know, coming on while I've been in really deep snow, um, and you'll hear that ABS motor at that individual wheel that's slipping and so you can send torque to the other side. So really there's very few scenarios uh, because of that feature that you know, you're gonna get stuck in this vehicle. You've got plenty of ground clearance, 8.7 inches, um, and you get the right tires on this, and it does a really great job. So I've been really impressed with it, honestly. It's been pretty amazing. Uh, now, is it an STI? Like, no, the STI has limited slip front and rear and a really cool center differential which can fully lock up. Uh, this can't do that, and it doesn't have those super high-end off-road features. Uh, but it has more ground clearance than the STI, and honestly, I wouldn't have been driving the snow that I was driving in this with my old STI just because it didn't have the clearance that this has. Um, so the all-wheel drive system in this is really good. Uh, you know, it's it's not like it's got full lockers front and rear, um, so you can rock crawl, and it doesn't have a crawl ratio, so you know you're limited by your first gear's ratio, which is pretty aggressive, and you can crawl pretty slow, uh, but even still, I find myself slipping the clutch in certain situations uh, where I'm going really slow in order to get over an obstacle smoothly. Um, so, you know... It's not the world's greatest off-road vehicle, and that's certainly not what I'm trying to say here, uh, but it does a really good job of handling snow um, and ice in situations like this, uh, which I'm driving in. This here is very minor stuff, um, but I've been in some much deeper stuff in this vehicle. And as long as you keep some momentum, uh, the all-wheel drive does a great job of sending torque to the wheels that have traction. Uh, and these tires do a great job of accelerating, braking, uh, turning, etc. So I've been really pleased with it overall. Um, as far as some of the other downsides of this vehicle, just kind of getting into the long-term ownership thing, I still do wish it had a coolant gauge. 
Um, and it does have the rev hang, which is a little annoying. Honestly, I've gotten used to it and I don't notice it quite as much. Um, but basically what I'm doing every time I shift gears is letting my foot completely off the gas pedal, waiting a little bit, and then it'll close the throttle and then pressing the clutch in and shifting. And then it'll be much quicker and smoother. Uh, but there's that period of time where you're just letting your foot off and waiting for it to stop giving it throttle. Um, so a little annoying. I've gotten over it. It's not a sports car, so I don't care. If it was sporty, I'd be a little more frustrated. Uh, like how the WRX behaves in a very similar fashion and you know you want to be shifting quickly in that car uh, versus this thing is just something to putter around in but honestly aside from that um, it's been awesome having ground clearance it's amazing what you can go over with just a few more inches um, over what you know most stock vehicles have like my SDI had almost six inches which is good but then you get closer to nine inches um, and it's pretty impressive you know how few times you're encountering situations where it's like no I can't get over that um, those extra couple inches actually go a long way especially when you have a shorter wheelbase vehicle like this Crosstrek so I've really been enjoying it overall um, fuel economy was one thing I did want to chat about and I can pull it up and see what it's been I've been driving a lot of city traffic and you know driving in the snow a lot and driving when it's really cold in short distances um, and it's been doing 23 it's saying for this tank which isn't that good I believe that's actually its city rating um, but I've been driving in deep snow and letting it idle and warm up and stuff like that and doing different videos I actually did a video with it just sitting there idling for 10 minutes so my overall average for the car with these 1570 miles on it is 29 miles per gallon and that's you know I've had the car topper on top so from an aero standpoint it's had that up there um, and done a lot of stuff not on roads and driving in snow and stuff like that on these 1500 miles so 29 miles per gallon I'm pretty pleased with that considering the conditions and the fact that I've had that big topper up there uh, you know which is just a, basically a big uh, wind block that's just an air brake uh, while ever I'm whenever I'm driving so um, overall yeah I mean fuel economy I think it could be a little bit better the CVT that I drove I was easily able to get into the mid 30s high 30s um, I even did some some highway driving and I managed to get uh, 41 over like 60 miles or so in in the Crosstrek CVT um, so you know the manual transmission definitely does take away as far as fuel economy is concerned but you get higher wheel torque uh, and better acceleration in the manual version than the CVT so you know I'm willing to trade off for that and it's you know more fun to drive now if you're wondering why the cinematic quality why the, the video footage from this video was a little bit better than usual uh, that's not my doing you know that I'm not that talented with the camera that's these guys from gears and gasoline Ben and Ben um, they're awesome they've been hanging out for the weekend and we're doing a video for their channel which is gonna be what's it gonna be called getting to know engineering experience getting to know engineering explained so it's going to be kind of a glimpse into my channel so I'm going to include a link here at the end of this video which you can click somewhere in the middle or whatever and I'll also include a link to their channel so you can check that out they've done this with some other channels regular car reviews uh, uh, that dude in blue and that dude in blue and do it with Dan so they've kind of got these little mini documentaries on different channels that are pretty cool you should check them out thanks for watching